guys, just over those trees is reactor number five, the reactor that never got finished. We've got to sneak our way in and hopefully we can get into reactor number five. How incredible would that be? Top of reactor number five. Just looking over at reactor number four. And it's actually quite breathtaking. Now this tank was used to clean the most contaminated areas of Chernobyl and was actually used to help cut down the red forest. 1.5 million zeros or 1500. The, you see pre petrol time, no any trees, no any forest because he buried red forest. Okay. He is liquidated. Yes. Uh, December uh, was in 1860. Yeah. So explorers, that guy that we just met behind us was actually one of the liquidators in 1986. And what he did, he helped bury the Red Forest. about to do is probably one of the most dangerous things I have ever done. We are going into the basement of Pripyat Hospital. Now this is highly radioactive. I do not encourage anybody to go into this basement. We're doing it so you guys don't have to. So Explorers, this series is slightly different to most people that are on YouTube. I mean, a lot of YouTubers just go to the main parts like Pripyat, Chernobyl, but we are actually showing you like little villages outside of Chernobyl, like a cattle farm like this. I mean, these are the little things that a lot of people don't see. And this is what I wanted to show you guys because things like this just get left forgotten. So yeah, guys, you are seeing stuff that not a lot of people have seen. Yo, what's happening guys and welcome back to another video so today is the day that me and warren are heading out to the most famous abandoned location on the planet uh, you guys probably already know where we're going because i'll probably put it on instagram and photographs absolutely everywhere but uh, yeah we're off to chernobyl baby just at the airport stansted getting a little bit nervous don't like flying too much I'm sure we are going to be all right. All right, guys, I'll catch you inside the airport. All right, guys, we're in the airport. Warren's been stopped by security. I told you he would. I had a pat down. And Warren's now getting his bags searched. So, uh, yeah, we both got stopped. We both must look dodgy as heck. <laughs> but yeah, guys, we've made it in. Just waiting for Warren now just to be searched and we can get on the plane. Happy days. I want to go home this year. I'm leaving oh, on a jet yeah. plane. I don't know when I'll be back again. Guys, pray for us for a safe landing and take off. Base, base, biscuit base. Should have bought a biscuit base. So here we go. We have Warren uh, Tepper, who's going to tell us Warren everything Tepper? you need to know about this aeroplane. Who's Warren Tepper? <laughs> Warren Erbexon, tell us everything Urbex. you know about this plane. Uh, that's the engine. Yeah. That's the wing. That's the plane. Okay. I thought he was a mechanic and he was going to go into more detail than that. Mate, I'm a mechanic on cars, not aeroplane. <laughs> Guys, we are now on the plane. We are ready to take off. We're ready to get to Kiev. 
very, very quickly, hopefully. My heart is pounding pretty fast. I need to relax, guys. I need to relax. Oh, mate. Seriously, chill out. Huh? Chill out, man. Chill out, man. Yeah. Right. I'll see you guys in Kiev. Yo yeah, guys, so we just landed in Kiev. We've just got to the airport. I mean, the temperatures, it's really warm. It's warmer than it was in the UK. It's lovely, mate. Lovely, this is like uh, shorts and t-shirt weather. But yeah, we're just about to meet our tour guide. And then carry on with our adventure off to the next destination. So guys, we're in Kiev now. And as you, as you can see, there's been a, a slight accident on the road. Look at all that smoke, wow. What's that, a shop on fire? Ah, uh, it looks like. Fireman's walking. Looks like it's a shop on fire. Not too, not too sure what's going on. Right guys, we have now made it to our accommodation. I've got to say, that drive through Ukraine was amazing. I mean, some of the stuff that we saw, I'm just not used to seeing. It's completely different to what I'm used to back at home. And I've got to say, some of the driving as well was a little bit like sketchy. I mean, there was a few times when we was in the car, we was like, that was a close one. But we got here safe, and I just want to thank the driver really, because he was full of so much information. When we was um, driving through, he was just telling us, like every building that we saw he's giving us information about that so that was great so um yeah guys if i haven't told you already we're working with a company called solo east travel now they're a tour company of chernobyl and they've brought us out here purely just to show you guys what they offer on their tours now we're at the accommodation and as you can see behind me there's a lake in the garden i mean come on i mean what other tour companies provide that I'm going to show you the uh, accommodation that we're staying in in a minute. And let's just say, I've always wanted to stay in a log cabin. And finally, that dream has come true. I'm staying in a log cabin tonight. It is crazy. So if you're interested in booking a tour with them, I'm going to leave a link down below. Honestly, guys, I would go with them. I'm not just saying that because they've flown us out here. But what they have provided for us on this tour is absolutely amazing. I mean, we got picked up from the airport, driven through to the accommodation, and the accommodation is incredible. So yeah, let me show you where we are staying. It is a, it's a cottage. I like to call it a log cabin though. So we've got the main front area as you walk in. Nice log fire as well. We've got the TV up on the wall. And again, it is all wood inside. It's just got so much character, this place. And lovely. I mean, they cooked us dinner as well. They've even cooked us dinner. And you get that part of your package. So, uh, bonus, eh? And it was really nice as well. I had beef and mashed potato. And what's this traditional bread called? No, it's black bread. Black bread. This is a traditional bread in Ukraine. And apparently you can make, uh, is it vodka with it? Kvass. Kvass. So you can make kvass with this bread, so it's pretty cool. And yeah, traditional bread. Let's go to the kitchen. You've got the kitchen area, massive fridge, microwave, everything you need in there. Blah de blah de blah. But now we're gonna come down here, and this is the room that I'm staying in. Decent sized room, two beds. I only need one of them. Turn around. Show you guys the bathroom. I mean, this is a lovely bathroom. Very modern bathroom as well. Not something I was expecting inside this cottage. 
I was expecting it to be like a wooden, but it's really nice, really nice. I mean, the toes are lovely. Really modern sink. Lovely shower. I mean, I'm a tall lad, we need a big shower. And yeah, let's carry on going through. I'm gonna show you where Warren stands today. Warren always gets lucky on these trips, always. He's got the bigger bedroom. Again, bathrooms are near enough identical. But he, yeah, I said, I said, you always seem to get lucky on these trips, mate. <laughs> you do. You, look, he's got a TV in here as well, look. TV. And a double bed. I'm all right. I, I'm one of these people, I, I don't really mind where I sleep. But yeah, I mean, you walk straight out and you've got this amazing view again. Right, so guys, we've just met up with our tour guide for the day, Pasha, and he's going to tell you a little bit of information that you need to know about everything on these um, information boards. So the area of Chernobyl exclusion zone, today it's 2,600 square kilometers. So initially they create two circles, like 10 kilometer radius from the nuclear power plant and the 30 kilometer radius. But as soon as they start to check radiation level even further from the radiuses, so they see this picture, how the radiation spread mostly to the west and to the north. So also the Belarus, because it's in the northern part of Ukraine, have the exclusion zone, little bit smaller, around 2,400 square kilometers. But it's more contaminated. If on Ukrainian area locates around 40% of radiation fallout, Belarus have the rest, 60%. So today the 30 kilometer zone mostly clean. So here locates short living radionuclide like strontium-90 and cesium-137 with the period of half-life 29 and 30 years. So it means in this time 50% of initial concentration disappear. But the problem of 10 km zone mostly is contaminated with long living nucleus and the most longer one is different type of plutonium. Okay. So one of type of plutonium have around 10,000 years but the longest one it's 24,000 of years. So this zone will be forever contaminated, like many of thousands of years. To clean it all, people need to wash up all the facility and take, like remove up to 30, 50 centimeters of open soil. Damn. But it's almost impossible. So the territory of the power plant and around the Pripyat town, we have many of the burial sites. So the special equipped places where the radioactive waste locate in the special concrete like sarcophagus, like boxes under the ground. So these places highly protect with the security service, with the police. Also the same with the nuclear power plant. It's also protect because still many of spent nuclear fuel from the reactor number one, two and three locate in the special storage. Right, so guys, this image that you can see in front of me and this road that we are on, is the road that we are actually on now. As you can see, the lampposts in this picture are the lampposts just outside the car. And on the pedestrian side, as you can see there, it's completely overgrown now. Nothing there. I mean, you wouldn't even know that it existed there. But yeah, it's just crazy seeing the picture here and seeing it like this now. So they were like completely covered with radiation. The and forest is gone now, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, not to spread radiation from these trees with the wind again, government just cut down and buried they under the ground. So today all the original red forest under the ground, but new trees start to grow there. The radiation is getting a lot higher now as we approach the red forest that was cut down after the disaster. Sure. It's just starting, well, it's growing back now. And the radiation levels are at 12. Point zip, nine to three? Yeah, oh, wow, that's crazy. So now it's started decreasing. And there we have the famous sign. Right, so guys, I'm going to show you how radioactive the Earth is. I mean, as you can see now, it is 0 0.78. The closer I get to the soil, as you can see, it's getting higher. Now, if I put it down to the ground, you can see it's up to 0 
if I even go over here, it, it starts the beep, and it's 4.33. And that is how much radiation you are going to get through your body in an hour. Four, it's gone up to six now, guys. If I pull it even closer to the ground, seven, and it is rising. So if I was to stay here for an hour, this is how much radiation I'm going to get through my body. We're up to 15. So that is why we don't stay in places like this for very long because we don't want to be obviously contaminated with this radiation. So uh, yeah guys, we're going to carry on and get closer into Pripyat. Right guys, here we go. We are now entering Pripyat, the main area. That's it, we are now in. Explorers, this is going to blow your mind because it just blew mine. I'm going to show you something and then I'm going to show you what it used to look like to what it looks like now. It is completely different and I didn't think we were in the same place until I saw the photograph. So guys, as you can see from this photograph, you can see the traffic lights and behind it is the swimming pool. It's a kind of like a crossroads. Now if I show you this, there's the traffic lights and in the background we have the swimming pool. It's just amazing over the years how different this whole place has changed. You can see how nature has completely overtaken this city. Pipriette swimming pool, there it is. Again, that's what it used to look like. That's what it looks like now. This is absolutely unbelievable. I just can't believe we're here. I really cannot believe we are here in Chernobyl exploring this place. Almost 33 years to the day the Chernobyl disaster happened and now we are walking around exploring this abandoned city. This is a photograph of what it used to be like and this is what it looks like now. So guys, this swimming pool is 5 metres deep and 25 metres long. And the diving board itself, the little one is 3 metres and the big one is 5 metre diving board. So guys, as you can see, this is not actually a clock. This is to time. It's, it's, it's a timer, basically. And it would time how, how fast you would like do your races. Now below it is a sign. Now this sign is for the people who worked in the nuclear power station and like their children and it is like a, a, a sports sign. It's their sports like symbol really and apparently this hasn't always been here. I mean it's been in Pripyat but it was probably in like a basement somewhere and somebody come into the swim pool and they put that here which I think is really good because people could come in and it just there's more history behind it all when you can see stuff like this lying around. So explorers, if you are a big fan of Call of Duty, you will recognise the swimming pool from the game. One of the maps has, well, one of the maps is based on Chernobyl and Pipriet. And they have this swimming pool that you can actually go in. And I've played that game quite a lot, and to stand it, it's just like, I'm in Call of Duty, I'm in Call of Duty, Warren. So explorers, apart from a swimming pool being here, they have actually got a basketball court as well. So we're going to head over and show you guys Pipriet basketball court. So explorers, this is the basketball area. As you can see, a lot of the floor is now torn up. And again, all the metal on the windows would have been stolen. That's why most of the glass is all like falling through. 
So there, there was some good like sports facilities in Pipriet and they had their own teams as well. Right guys, now this is something I didn't know existed. You've got the main swimming pool for like the adults and stuff, but if you've got little kids, you've got a, the smaller swimming pool for the uh, children. As you can see though, it's still pretty deep. I mean, if I was a child swimming in that, I definitely would have armbands on, that's for sure. But uh, yeah, this is the swimming pool for the children. So guys, we are just about to enter the school of district number three. So each district had a school. District number three, we are about to enter now. As you can see, they've got it written up on the sign as well. So guys, before we go into one of the classrooms, I've just noticed there's a jacket outside there left on the table. I wonder who used to wear that and if that person is still alive. But we are now going to go into one of the most iconic rooms in this school. And here it is guys, the gas masks that they would have used to protect themselves, just lying it on the floor. There's just so many, it's unreal. So guys, the room we're actually stood in now is the canteen area where they'd come, have their food and as you can see all the equipment is still here but a lot of it has actually been cut up and people have actually stolen it which is a big shame, I mean, but that's what people do I mean, anything that's worth of value they're going to take and through here is the kitchen And as you can see, there's gas masks all over the floor, just lying there, put there purely because people wanted to take decent photographs. That is the reason what most people are saying that they're there for. At first, they wasn't sure why they were there, so that's the only thing that they can pull it down to was because they wanted to make an epic photo. So guys, I found two books on this table. One is Russian language and one is the Russian alphabet. Now, it's, it says on there, your language? And the three on the book means what grade it is. So this is third grade. So it's pretty interesting. And then next to it, we've got like a, a DNA like statue here. And apparently this statue here has been moved around so many times just to get a decent photograph. So the science classes, there's one on the ground floor and there's a few on the second floor as well, which we will we'll go and have a look in a sec. So guys, we've come into a classroom now. This classroom would have been for first to fourth grade students and anything past there they would have been put into different classes but as you can see the tables are still here we still got books on the tables as well which they would have learnt from and then at the back there's like a notice board I'm not too sure what that says on there but on the floor 
there's pages of books still down there. And at the front we have the alphabet as well. So you, it could have been like a language class that they taught in there. But apparently all these classrooms were used for like loads of different lessons. So guys, here is a poem written by one of the students that used to come to this school. I'm not quite sure what it says, but that is fascinating. Guys, we've entered one of the physics classrooms now. As you can see, there isn't much left in this classroom. But I want to show you as much as I can. In Chernobyl there are a lot of different species of animals and, and what the tour guide was saying there are about 300 stray dogs that run around in Chernobyl and I've actually found my first one so I'm going to show you now guys. Here it is. This is one of the stray dogs in Chernobyl. Our first one of many that we're probably going to see running around in Chernobyl today. Hello mate. No, he's just chilling. He wants to stay out the rain and he doesn't want to be hassled. So I'm going to get the camera out of his face and carry on. So guys, we are actually stood in a furniture shop now and everything that was sold here was sold to be put into the apartments and as you can see, a lot of the stuff is still here. Like we've got drawers, cupboards, uh, yeah, all the furniture that they would need in their apartments. And as you can see, it's a pretty decent sized room. So yeah guys, the name of this shop is called Rainbow and as you can see, the main colour of the furniture in this room is, is, is brown. So uh... <laughs> It's a bit funny that. Yeah. So as we walk around Pit Priette, there is a lot of graffiti. And it's pretty amazing graffiti. I mean, check this out. That is proper artwork, that is. And I mean, this has been there for just over a year. And also, guys, recently there has been a sighting of a bear actually in Chernobyl. So, uh, yeah, it's quite um, ironic, really. Now I think the next place that we're going to explore is probably the place that I've been looking forward to the most. We are going to the amusement park. Now I want to go there and get a photograph. That is like the main reason that I'm here. Cannot wait. Right, so guys, we are here. We are in the amusement park now. And I can see it. The most iconic part of Pipriette. The fair. Explorers, we are now in the amusement park. Now this place was supposed to have been opened the 1st of May. That was the official opening of this amusement park. But they actually opened it early on the 26th, the day of the disaster. And that is because they wanted everybody to come down there and they didn't want anybody to panic what was actually happening in Pipria and how dangerous the nuclear explosion was. So they opened it just to like put everybody's mind at ease and it was only open for one day. And one thing that I noticed coming here is that Ferris wheel is a lot bigger than I first thought. I mean when I see photographs and stuff it doesn't actually show you really how big this ferris wheel actually is. <laughs> and then we have Warren, he's actually riding one of the rides there. And then right down at the end, we've got the dodgems and then a shooting range right behind. And as you can see, what I will show you guys later, there is some more artwork and there are some deer on the walls. This is probably one of the most iconic things in Pipriat. This is one of the main things that I wanted to see coming here. There's only one thing that I can do while I'm here, and that is, I've got to touch it. I've got to just, I've just got, I'm here, there we go, I've touched it. 
we have touched the Ferris wheel in Pipriot. And the one crazy thing is, when you walk around Pipriot and you see all like the paint and stuff, most of the paint has completely like disappeared, but the caps on this Ferris wheel are still yellow. I don't know if they use some special paint on this Ferris wheel. <laughs> So guys, check this out. This is pretty crazy. Okay. Um, wait. On one spot, not so high. One spot, not high. But just moving it over, it goes to 207. And that beeping that you can hear indicates that there's um, gamma rays coming from this Ferris wheel. So look at that. That's already it, gone down uh, to 2.8. This, this beeping? It means that through the device, uh, like, flies the gamma rays. You see, as uh, further, the beeping start to go lower. Yep. And as closer... It's just crazy, it's that one little spot, on it? Right, so explorers, we are actually going to go inside the dodgems now. And show you a close-up view of these. So guys, it's crazy to think that this amusement park was open just for one day. All the money that was spent to build it, and they only opened it for one day, it's like... Yeah, it's hard to get your head around. Right, so explorers, we are now inside a parade room. And as you can see, all the banners are here, but were never used. Now this was going to be used on the 1st of May, the opening of the funfair. And obviously the disaster happened before they could actually use it. So it's just all left there in this room, never used. And now guys, we are going in to the theater. So guys, we are now at the back of the stage in the theater and beyond this point would have been all the seats, but we can't go any further because it is pretty dangerous in there. And guys in front of us as well, we've got some more lighting. And then beyond that would have been the seating area for the audience and the people that are going to come here and watch the theatre. Not going any further because it is like very, very dangerous. Explorers, we are now outside a grocery store. Now, as you can see, you can see all the shopping carts are still inside. And what I've been told is, now this isn't 100%, but it's what? a lot of people think that this was the first like grocery store and shopping market in Ukraine to have um, like trolleys like other supermarkets that you'd have to go to and grocery stores you'd have to ask for what you wanted this one you could just go around and get whatever you wanted and apparently that was the first one in Ukraine to do that because they wanted to make Pipriet like the, um, the the best city or best town in Ukraine and again, you can see the names of each aisle and what would have been sold in them aisles. And I think you just, I think there is still the fridges of um, where they'd actually keep all the groceries. And again, guys, outside the supermarket, we have more graffiti. And these are, this is over 10 years old, as I was told. So we've got one, which is a, a little kid on like one of them bouncy balls. And over here, is another kid pulling a funny face. Right, so guys, we have come to some residential flats in Pipperet, and we are going right to the top. So guys, we are now on top of one of the block of flats, 16 stories up. Just check out this view. I think this is one of the best views in Pripyat that we are ever going to see. Absolutely incredible, guys. I'm, I'm literally lost for words. I am speechless. And guys, if you look over there, in the distance, 
that huge, huge dome is reactor four in Chernobyl. The reactor that blew up and caused all this destruction. Also guys, while we are up here, over there is Belarus. That is the border and that's what separates Ukraine from Belarus. Guys, just to show you how high we are, if you're scared of heights, look away now. Sixteen stories high, looking over Pripyat. Absolutely incredible. My dream has definitely come true, guys. So we're here entering the hospital now. And this is the main hospital in Pipriet. And I mean, there's a lot of stuff to see in this place. Right, explorers, we are now in the hospital in Pipriet. And the first room that we come into is an operating theater. Now, as you can see, we've got the lights on top. We've got the operating table and we've got some medical equipment. I'm not quite sure what's in it. If you can translate that, then yeah, translate it for us in the comment section. Also guys, it looks like there's like um, some sort of safety uh, coat or something, doctor's coat. I'm not sure what it is. Honestly explorers, check out how long these corridors are. With no electricity inside there and as dark as it is, it is so eerie. It's time to get the lights on and explore this hospital a little bit more. So guys, if you've seen um, Josh's video on Chernobyl, you know that he went into the basement of this hospital and he found all the firefighters um, equipment down there. This was one of the main entrances to get down, but what they've done is they filled it in now. So you, yeah, it's a lot harder to get in. But yeah, that would have been good to see, but we can't get down there. And apparently it's like a maze down there, very hard to uh, get around. But uh, yeah, very radioactive down there as well. And next to the entrance, guys, there's a, a safety suit here. And that is to stop people from like cutting themselves while they're down there. And, like get infected with like radiation and stuff that they want to keep out of your bodies. All right, so guys, in the basement, there is still the like clothing that the um, firefighters would use. Somebody's actually brought a bit of the fabric that was worn by a firefighter up. Now if I stand back and look at our meter, you can see it's reading 0 0.33. Now if I put this next to that bit of fabric, you can see it's now reading, it's going up, 10.54. And it's just going to go up and up and up. So that just shows you how radioactive the firefighters' like clothing and stuff was. So guys, this room here would have been used for like water therapy. So obviously, you'd get the patient, you'd put them in the bath, and just try to get them moving again. I mean, like their muscles, they're going to seize up. Get them into the water therapy. It's going to relax the muscles. It's, it's just going to make them feel a lot better. So this is what this room would have actually been used for. Right, explorers, we're coming into the maternity area now. This is where they would give birth on that table. And look, it's even set up still, ready for somebody to come in here and give birth. I mean, we've got the huge operating lights above. 
so explorers. This book here, everything that you read ends in 85. I mean, I don't know if these are the names of like patients or like the babies that were delivered. But 85 is the last date that it goes to. Wow. Oh God. We've got another one. Got another one of these birthing chairs. So guys, you can just picture how they would have given birth in this hospital. <laughs> I'm not going into too much detail, you've got your own imaginations. But somewhere down here is where they would have bring the babies. Alright guys, we are now coming into the room where they would bring the babies once they have been born and put into like little beds or their little cots or whatever they, they call these uh, baby beds and they're all exactly the same as well some are rised up and some are completely flat So guys, we're in another like theatre room. Now this could be a room where they bring like the patients to check if the baby's okay. And again, we've got a cabinet over here with some like medical supplies still in the cabinet. So guys, this is a photograph from inside the arch and can you just see how big that is? 108 meters tall and 260 meters wide and it weighs 36,000 tons, which is absolutely incredible and cost over a billion pound to build as well. So we stand somewhere here on this spot. Okay. And the destroyed reactor. And this monument that you can see here, guys, that was built for the uh, first people that built the first shelter over the reactor. To heroes professionals, to those who protected the world from a nuclear disaster in honour of our 20th anniversary of the shelter object construction, the 30th of the 11th, 2006. So guys, in case you didn't know and you've been living under a rock for the past like so many years, this is actually reactor number four. And this is where the explosion actually happened and caused this like massive nuclear disaster. I mean, guys, I cannot describe to you how big that dome actually is. I mean, you see photographs online and until you've seen it in person, then you can honestly say, yeah, wow, that is absolutely insane. Right, guys, we've come further away from the reactor now just to get this amazing view. I mean, that's reactor number four over there with the dome. Over here is reactor number five. Now, this one was never finished and was never built. But if you look at the cranes around, them cranes were told to stop work in 1986. So them cranes have never moved since. And I think a couple of them have already fallen down, like just for being there for so long. So in some areas you will see that pine trees uh, grows in the straight lines. So many of the kilometers of the forest was hand planted. So from the road you impossible to see the antenna.
Right, so guys, this is quite a funny story. Before we actually go and explore a little bit further on into Chernobyl, here is a mannequin. Now the security guards of this military base made this mannequin, so if their job got a little bit boring, what they'd do is they would stick it out so anybody around the area would think that they're still out working when the actual security guards can go off and do something a little bit more fun. So it still looks like they're working. I don't know guys, I'm, I'm not convinced, I'm not convinced. Nah, I mean the closer you get, no, definitely not. But let's carry on and explore a little bit more. Right explorers, we have now come to a military base in Chernobyl. We are in the military square where they would do all their marching. We've got the barracks here, more barracks on the other side. And behind the military base is this huge radar called the Duga also known as the woodpecker. Now the reason it was called the woodpecker was because it would interfere with military radio stations and it would make a like tap, tapping sound. And that is why the nickname the woodpecker come about. Also guys, this military base was disguised as a kid's summer camp. So everybody that didn't know this was here thought it was a kid's summer camp. So uh, that is why the, this military base was like undetectable and this huge radar system nobody really knew about because it was just disguised. But honestly, you want to check out the size of this uh, radar system. It is insane. So guys, the radar system was built to pick up like uh, missiles. If there was a missile coming into range, it would hit the signal of the ra radar system, then they would know that there was a missile coming in. And that is the reason it was built in case uh, of an attack. So guys, this bit of information on air is what you should do when you're inside a watchtower. So it basically tells you you can't leave the watchtower for like 12 hours. And as you can see over there, there's one of the watchtowers. And you would be inside one of those watchtowers for 12 hours flat. Obviously you couldn't have a break or anything. Yeah, that is crazy. And this information here just tells you what clothes that they should wear in the winter. And other times, I don't know if that's like when you're on patrol or something. It's just different military clothes that you wear. So guys, we're now going into the training area. Now this is where they would teach anybody who was working on the Duga how to use it. Now as you can see, look at the size of it. Right, so guys, we are now in the training area for the Duga. Now, everything that you need to know, you would learn inside this, um, this area. So as you can see above, these are all the missiles from like America, and they would know absolutely everything like how fast the missile can go uh, how many seconds it takes for it to like take off and the way that they find out is on these pads there it would come up with a, a unique pattern now these uh, these soldiers will work out what each pattern means and what missile that it um, represents so say that missile up there was coming in the radar would pick it up and it would beam up a pattern on this panel. And whatever pattern does come up, they could work out how fast it's going, what missile is actually coming in. And it's, it's incredible. Just check this place out. Also guys, a little bit more information about this radar. 
it wasn't shown on Google Maps when uh, Google Maps was made because obviously they didn't want anyone knowing about it so they didn't allow the radar system to be put on to Google Maps that's how much they wanted to keep this a secret away from everyone but it is it's just breathtaking really it really is and if you could see how Warren was reacting around there he was like a big kid that's because this is my most favourite part of Chernobyl so far my most favourite part Amazing trip. And all I've got to say is thank you to Solo Week for putting that Hello, buddy, we haven't got no food. No, but he's a good boy though, isn't he? Hey? You can't have that, that's not yes, for you to blow with. Exactly this dog have a Dear Slake in the mouth, so... Alright, see you later Tarzan. We're off. You're a very cute dog. Bye bye. He's a very nice dog. So guys, these vehicles that you can see, the first line were the vehicles, robots, that were used to, was used to clean the roof of reactor number three. So when reactor number four exploded, obviously it went on to reactor number three as well. So these vehicles at the front was used to clean the roof of reactor number three. You can see the military vehicles at the back as well, and the cranes in the middle. Fighters. So it was built close to it in 1996. So on the monument you will see the firefighters to the right and the plant workers to the left. So the name of it, for those who saved the world. Well, in theory, yeah, well, in all reality, they actually did save the world. Well, quite a hell of a lot of a sizable chunk of it. Definitely. Because if they hadn't sorted the fires out and drained the basement out, that could have yeah. killed the whole of Europe. So, because of that situation, they name it like this. For those who saved the world. That's a pretty decent monument as well. The brave men that risked their life for us all to be in the lake. So guys, this is the town hall of Chernobyl and this is where the engineers of the Chernobyl power plant were put on trial because they thought they were the blame for the reactor number four blowing up. They were put on trial here and yeah, later on sent to prison. Now I was told that they were supposed to serve 10 years in prison but because they were so unwell with like radiation poisoning, they only did five years. So guys, this is a statue of Lenin. He was the creator of the Soviet Union. Now, he wasn't a very light guy. Only two of these monuments actually left in Ukraine. The rest of them were completely demol demolished because they didn't want anything to do with him. He was such a hated man, so he destroyed it. So this is one of only two still remaining. One here in Chernobyl and another one in another abandoned village. I'm not sure where, but it is pretty crazy. Yeah, buddy. He is safe. No radioactive. Guys, before we leave Chernobyl, we've got to test ourselves to see how radioactive we actually are. So, uh, here we go. Let's go. Are we safe? Put your hands on the thing. Well, I'm set. That's it. We're good. Yeah, baby. We're not going to stay here. Although I would love to stay here a little bit longer. Right. Guys, we have officially left Chernobyl now. That is the tour over. It has been extremely... It's been amazing. That is a dream come true. I can take it off my bucket list now. Right, time to go. I'll see you in a bit. Both of these horses was added to the zone to see how they will survive the radiation. Today we have more than 100 of these horses. Damn. They're completely wild. So you see they're a little bit smaller than regular horse, but bigger than pony. So they're like a special breed. 
Yeah, so it's like Mongolian breed of the wild horse. Okay. Uh, but that's one of the biggest, um, you've got one of the biggest numbers in the world, then, yeah? Uh, so, so today they like com like starts to go less, so ah, okay. numbers is decreasing. So in the zone, we have around 100, so this 10% of world population. Damn. Goodbye, Chernobyl. Bye bye. It's been an honor. What's happening, guys? And welcome back to Chernobyl series two. So it's our first full day and we are going back to Chernobyl. Got a lot of plan for you guys today. I want to go back and show you guys what it's like since the HBO series and how busy and how many people are actually going to be in Chernobyl. Because if you guys can remember the first time that we went, there wasn't that many people there. And since the HBO series aired on Sky, so many people have been coming back. I've just been talking to Igor, the um, tour guide, and he's been saying there's so many people. Since, about 40% in um, tourism it has gone up by since the HBO series. In this series, guys, I'm going to give you a full tour of the accommodation and everything Solo East give you with the package that you get. So, guys, let's go and explore Chernobyl. Right, so explorers, we are at our first checkpoint now. As you can remember from my first series, we're at this monument. Um, I don't think I actually showed you last time. I don't know if it's in English. I can't really remember what this monument is for. But it's definitely a religious monument. And as you can see, people have put money, some sort of like money down onto the floor. Also, guys, I've just bought myself a full body protection suit. So you guys already know what is happening in this series. We are going to be showing you stuff that not a lot of people have seen and not a lot of people have been down for a very long time. So it's going to be good, it's going to be good. So guys, just stay tuned. We're waiting for Igor, our tour guide now, to um, fill out some paperwork that we've got to sign, which lets us go into Chernobyl, gets us past the first checkpoint. Also, I'm going to be telling you some home truths as well later on, stuff that the internet say that isn't actually true. So you're gonna be finding out the truth in this series. We are joined today by one of my buddies, Luke Dennis. Now this is your first time in Chernobyl, yeah? It is, and there's our full suit. And this is our full suit, guys. It cost us 400. <laughs> yeah, it cost us an arm and a leg, to be honest with you. But it's gonna allow us access into places that not a lot of people can go into without it. So, uh, yeah. Right, we're gonna wait for Igor now, and I'll carry on filming afterwards. See you in a bit. Right, so guys, we have now made it through our first checkpoint and we are in the town of Chernobyl. What we're going to do now is we're going to go into a canteen and there's a restaurant on top and this is where the workers will come at the power plant to like eat their food basically. So yeah, as you can see behind us, this is the town of Chernobyl and behind us here, this is the canteen and restaurant where we're going to go into now and see if there's anybody in there to talk to. Also our tour guide for today is Igor. You've probably seen him all over YouTube as well. Local celebrity really, aren't you? Uh, guten Morgen. Guten Morgen. <laughs> so guys, the name of this canteen, as you can see up there, is translated as Pripyat. So uh, this is where all the workers would come to get their food. Yeah, that's what, that's what it is. But and we're going to go in now. The workers uh, come here for food. They have to be checked in case of contamination. There are some cannons. Ah, I got you, okay. So yeah guys, once the workers have finished their shift and they come in here to uh, have their food, obviously they need to be checked for radiation. So as you remember from the first series, when we left um, Pripyat, we had to be tested in one of these to see how radioactive we were. Luckily we wasn't. How radioactive Jeff we are now? No. No? <laughs> <laughs> no, not yet. That made you jump a bit then, didn't it? Do you wanna... Come, 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 come. Can you sit there? Can you sit there? This means you're already contaminated. Oh no. Guys, I'm already contaminated. I've only been here five minutes. <laughs> I, I guess, uh, you know, when... When it is, it is off now, right? Okay. When they turn it on, it, it is testing itself, you know? So, each scanner has 14 detectors and special display which can show, shows us uh, 
Yeah. So well, I'm guessing what, well, what, well, okay. whatever flashes is where yes, the... This is the uh, left, left uh, shoes, right shoes. The left hand, right hand. Ah, okay, got you. And how, back. How does it go? Back? Back side. Back side? Ass. <laughs> I know us. I, I know only us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know if it's uh, correctly to <laughs> yeah. say yes. Yes. Have you ever had anybody on a tour that fell? Um, yes, uh, maybe five times during ten years. Yeah. And all these cases, the shoes were contaminated. Right, so guys, we've come into our first grocery store, and as you can see down here, we have got some Chernobyl apples. They're not really, guys. They're watermelons, but. I think that's like a running joke that the apples grow so big out here. And yeah, and as you can see, they sell near enough every, everything that you need. They've got um, juice, and this, this is the good part. This is the best section. Look at all of this alcohol. Oh, and fish. Fish, smoke of cheese. Where does the fish come from then? Is it? They, they say from outside, they say. Uh, yeah, okay. Welcome to Ukraine. Yeah, welcome they to They say from, uh, from outside. Now behind us, this is the bar, this is where you drink. Something, something that I've learned today guys is people in Chernobyl are only allowed to drink for two hours. Alcohol is served from 7 o'clock, 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. So they've only got two hours to drink. So you can imagine all the workers would come over here and just drink as much as they can in two hours. I'll tell you, I would be, hang, I would be literally wobbling home. I'm not quite sure where we are, but Igor said there's something quite interesting to be shown here. So we've stopped, we've got out the car. So yeah, let's see where Igor is going to take us. Hopefully somewhere pretty cool. Right, this sign here, as we walk down to our first stop, says shooting range. So the guards, they have their own shooting range in this direction, where they practice their shooting. Hopefully their shooting isn't uh, on point today if they need it. But yeah, this is where we're going now, guys. So Igor has told us what the surprise is. We are going to an abandoned village called I Ilo? 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 Something like that, yes. Lelu. 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 So it's hard for me to pronounce the words. Um, so it's the same name as the shooting range and the second checkpoint. So this village has the same name. So yeah, this is the first time Igor has been there for 10 years. So it's going to be interesting for him to see what this place is like. As you can see guys, we are just entering the village. So we've got buildings on the right, we've got like little buildings on the left. Now apparently the population, we're not 100% sure yet, is about a thousand people that lived in this tiny little village that we're going to show you guys now. But we will tell you guys exactly how many when we leave because there's signs that tell you how many people used to live here before the um, disaster. Right, let's make our way through with the vegetation guys, all the trees. Now the first building that we're going to show you is a bank and a post office of this little village. Let's see what it's like inside. So you see a mailbox yep. and on a green, uh, green sign says Governmental Bank of Soviet Union. CCCP means USSR. Okay. It's a, a department and number of this department. Only one bank. Guys, on the side of this building, letterbox. The blue sign is saying that this place is a post office. The green sign is saying that this is a bank as well. As you can see guys, you can tell a lot of people have not been around this area. There's no path, there's no trodden in, but all you can see here is where an animal has walked through and it's like pushed down the grass. Do you know what kind of animal? Like a deer or...? Uh, yes, uh, 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 two-headed deer. <laughs> <laughs> guys, as you're going to find out, in this series, Igor is a bit of a joker. <laughs> He's a bit of a comedian. <laughs> so, uh, we have president comedian, you know. What do you, do you want to uh, have from guides? Our pre president is comedian, you know? Yeah. Yes. You know that? Yeah, yeah. So, everyone in Ukraine must be comedian as well. Got to. <laughs> <laughs> Get in and try to guess what is this. Right, okay. You heard that. I've got to go inside the building, guys and tell Igor what I think this would have been. Uh, straight away, I would say a school. 
Yeah. Correct. I've got the thumbs up by Igor. You can play a lot of it. You can guess. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, look at this. So everything you can see on the wall walls of this school guide is about the war. And up here, what we would call the Great World War II, they call it Great Patriotic War. Now a lot of this is all propaganda that brainwashes like the young kids into believing things that isn't actually happening, which is a shame. I mean, to brainwash people of that age, they grow up believing a lot of the stuff that is happening when a lot of it is a load of rubbish. But yeah, on the floor as well, you can see all the books that the kids would have used to um, read. So guys, this book that Igor's got, that he's just flicking through now, is a book which would prepare the students for a next, like, war or something. Or... How to build balls like this. Okay. You see? Underground bunker, yeah. Bloody hell. It's fascinating, some of the stuff that they were taught. And there, uh, here, you can see where um, power plants and nuclear power plants. Okay, so this is nuclear power plant, this is uh, hydro. Okay. Hydro power. So Kiev and Chernobyl nuclear power plant here. This is Ukraine. So how Chernobyl many nuclear power, plant. nuclear power plants is there in the... At that time, uh, Soviet Union had nine nuclear power plants. Nine nuclear power plants the Soviet Union had? But, yes, but they, all of them produced it. Uh, uh, maximum 11% of all Soviet Soviet uh, Union electricity. electricity. Okay, I've got yeah. So all of these are towns and nuclear power plants. Okay. Uh, so this is Novo Voronezhka nuclear power plant and just p p power stations. What you can see on this map are little towns, power stations that the Soviet Union would have had. And this whole map is of the Soviet Union. So guys, I'm feeling very privileged now to be in this school because as Igor said, he's, he's worked as a tour guide for 10 years and this is only the third time he has actually been in this school. So not a lot of tourists have actually been here. So what you are seeing now, there isn't a lot of um, photos or anything about this place. So yeah, this is amazing, but we're gonna carry on. I'm gonna guess it's a toilet, yeah? Take a look. Oh, it's like yesterday people left. Oh, wow. <laughs> Not like yesterday, it's so many dust. Okay, I'll have so much dust. Wow, this is incredible. Right, so we're coming in to one of the classrooms, guys. And as you can see, a lot of the machinery and stuff is still here on the tables. So you've got yourself an old record, a book, cylinder engine there guys. So I'm guessing this was, this is definitely some sort of like a, maybe engineering classroom. Yeah, they were trying to create, it seems like they're making electricity through water. Oh, was they? Science then? Yeah, science classroom. Yeah, Physics. yeah, Physics. so Physics. we just found out this is a science classroom. So this paper that you are looking at now, was a paper that was published in 1986. What did you say? Three, three months three before months the before. yeah, yes, three so months before the disaster. Is, this is uh, five weeks before, eighth of March. Okay, and the eighth of March, this one, which was three weeks before the disaster, five weeks, five weeks before the disaster. Sorry. So one sign of showing you guys that a lot of people haven't been here is just how much stuff is just left behind. I mean, when you go to Pripyat and stuff, I mean, there are stuff left behind in the actual um, city. But when you come to a little village which is just outside that a lot of people haven't been to, then you are going to see a lot more, as you can see in this one classroom. I mean, it's like people literally got up and left. Now, I know I say that a lot in my videos, but this school that we're in now is it is like that. It's just like going back through time with just a little bit more dust. Yeah, amazing. Absolutely. I'm a bit speechless to be honest with you. Right, classroom number two. As you can see, we've got the uh, the blackboard. Is it a blackboard? I'm not quite sure. 
yeah, the blackboard where the teacher would write everything she needs to write. But as you can see, this one room has got about six photos or paintings of Lenin, who was the leader of the um, Soviet Union. Now he was a god, people used to worship him, and he was like the father as well of the Soviet Union. And look, there's, just, there's one here, there's another one. And I mean, most of the schools around this area would have been taught to worship him, and, and everybody would think he's a, not, he's a good bloke, he's a good bloke, but as people found out later on, he wasn't as good as what people thought he was. Classroom number three. Wow. Right, so this classroom, as you can see, has all the desks still in here. Uh, there isn't much paperwork or anything, or like belongings, it's just literally all the tables. Now as you can see, all the tables are exactly the same. And on the walls in the back, you can see, well I can't see because it's quite dark in there. Like, I don't know, it might be more propaganda up on the walls. So guys, as you can see on the floor here, there is um, the Soviet Union symbol, but each, there's 15 different republics. So over here we have the Russian Soviet Union um, symbol. Where's the Belarus one, do you say? Yeah. And that, this one here is Belarus. So each country has the same symbol. So you've got the hammer and the thickle, but behind it would be slightly different. So yeah, 15 of them and each one of them would have had a different design for that republic. And again, on the wall, I probably don't even have to say it because you probably already know who that is. That is Lenin. And over here, I'll give you guys in the comments 11 points if you can guess who that is. Again, that is Lenin. A communist in the future, guys, standing right next to him. So guys, on this table, we have like posters. And as you can see, you can just see them. There's no dust or anything on them. They're literally, it's like they've just been left there. And again, it is propaganda showing people how strong this country is. Like with the missile, you can see the missile there. Uh, we've got some sort of radar system, ships as well. So basically it's just telling people who read this how strong this country is. Don't mess with this country. This country will destroy you. Everything near enough in this school is propaganda, 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 and propaganda. This is the first classroom that I've come to where the decay is literally taking it over. As you can see, the floor has completely caved in. The desks are almost falling through the floor as well. Uh, oh, and the roof. Check the ceiling out. The ceiling is look, damp. The damp is taking over. The roof has fallen through. I don't even have to tell you guys what this classroom is because a lot of you can probably read what that is up on the wall. It is all in English. This classroom would have been an English classroom. So, uh, ooh, almost fallen over. Got to watch where, you, where you're going in this room. So if I come closer, yeah, as you can see, study our law, constitution, fundamental law of the USSR. And then over here is a map of our country, the United Kingdom. Now, if you guys didn't know, the worst affected area in the United Kingdom from the radiation was actually Wales. That was contaminated. Not terribly, but apparently, the farmers were finding some of their sheep, like, with radiation in them. I don't know how true that is, but that's just something that I read. The same style desks in the classroom as well. You can see how, how long they've been left there, basically, with the decay that you can see on top of the desks. And again, like every other classroom in this place, we've got the old chalkboard at the front where the teacher would uh, write out all the English for the students to learn. And then down there, on the floor, we have a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, basically telling the students our language and the days and how to tell the time, the months, yeah. 
and all the paperwork and all the books that was used by the students in this place have just been left on the floor just to basically rot and decay disappear all right hopefully guys you can see this because i've left my torch in the car like an absolute amateur but again this is another science lesson as you can see the old atom thing on the table over there uh what else have we got uh i'm not quite sure what these are what these are Some, some kind of like a projector. A projector, yeah. Okay, so yeah. Just found out this would have been a projector. Uh, maybe to put some scientific scientific stuff on the light and the it would project on the, onto the wall somewhere. But yeah, as you can see, there's animal bones in there. More animal bones and animal teeth. Chemicals and stuff. Yeah, yeah. scientific chemicals, guys, would have been in, in there. I'm not going to touch it. I don't know what that is, but... Yeah, I mean, there is Ukrainian words on there. So I'm guessing this stuff here would have been what that means inside the cupboard. And when you come down to the front of the classroom, what we've got is like um, test, tube, ch test tubes. And there's actually some film here. Some like camera film. And again, some more scientific chemicals inside that cupboard and on the desk geography classroom as you can see there's maps all on the tables and maps there's just maps everywhere here is another map And on the ceiling of this classroom, we've got a giant compass. And then I saw down there, on this desk here, it's like different rocks and different um, like stones and stuff. And maybe where they come from in the world or stuff like that. Hmm. So yeah guys, geography classroom. Carry on. Right, so we've just left the main school, the school that I was just showing you, and we've walked across, and we've come to a kindergarten now. Well, I'm hoping my battery stays alive, because I didn't realize that this little um, village that we're exploring was so big. Oh, wow. Okay, guys. This is pretty amazing. We've got all the toys in this room that the kids would have playing with. Down here, we have a, a doll. I've got to admit, that is a creepy looking doll. You wait till you see that one. Yeah. And some sort of bed. Oh my days, check this out. I knew this place was haunted. This doll is moving, guys. Hang on, there's got to be someone on the other side, surely. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, explorers. Well, I did ask Igor if he could show us an abandoned train, because there's supposed to be abandoned trains around there. And this is it. Unfortunately, this is all you're getting. <laughs> but, uh, I mean, when I come to places like this, I just imagine in my head, like, what this place would have been like back in its time. All the kids in there playing. Um, not knowing what is just about to happen. I mean, it's quite sad actually when you think about it. It's like, you should remember places like this as a happy time, but when you come into a place, when it's left in, with the decay like this, you can't help but think of like, sad times, you know, because it, it just looks very sad and just neglected. But yeah, I mean, check these dolls out. All these, they, they all seem to have the same colour hair as well. And this room here, guys, this stores all the beds that the children would have slept on. Quite a few of them as well. So yeah, explorers, this is the abandoned 
nursery explored now. We are going to a village which was buried under the ground due to the radiation. Now as you can see, we've got a signpost to the village which says Kopachi, which is the name of the village. Underneath the population, how many people used to live here? So 1,114 and the date that people were evacuated. So the 3rd of the 5th, 1986. So the 3rd of May, 1986. So guys, as you're just about to see here, these mounds, these hills that you can see, are houses buried underneath the ground. So it's like a cemetery of houses. And that is all that remains. And as you can see, the radioactive signs, and there's one on top of the mound as well. And I think we're just about to get out and check the radiation in this area. So we're reading 0.23 at the moment. Slowly going up. Well, it's gone up by one. So as you can see, not bad. No. Because it was covered with uh, clean soil. So as you can see guys, 0.24 is very, very low because the buildings themselves were actually buried by the clean soil. Yeah, was buried by the clean soil which isn't going to leak much radiation. And as you can see, that signpost is saying the location that we're at now. Kopachi, you see. This Kopachi. Is, uh, Kopachi, this is the name of this village. And this is capital letters of this location. Okay, got ya. So yeah, our first house, which was buried under the ground. Right guys, we stopped the car again. So apparently Igor was saying there's something interesting down there. First signs of a structure, a wooden fence. Doesn't sound interesting, but I'll guarantee as soon as we get there, it's gonna be. Experimental field trial site, IRS. Radiation protection, Germany. Okay. <laughs> What this um, area is, which is fenced off, it's actually a place where they would do experiments for like crops. What they'd do is they'd plant crops in this field and just see how they would grow after the radiation. And as you can see down there, bottles of water that they would use to water the crops. But at this precise moment, they're not actually using it anymore. But they might do in the future though. In the future they might come back here and do some more experiments. But they've moved on and they've started doing the test somewhere else I'm guessing. But yeah, very interesting. No money. But this is road, you know, since, uh, since uh, 1986, never fixed. Never fixed from 1986. But uh, not too bad. It's not actually, no. Yeah, it's not too bad because uh, no, no traffic here. If, it, if this was an English road, <laughs> left for 10 years, it wouldn't be here anymore. No, it would be a country lane. Yeah, it'd be, it would be, wouldn't it? Right guys, we've stopped off again on our way to Pripyat and we've stopped off at a cattle, like cattle farm. Yeah, basically this is a cattle farm with a lot of abandoned vehicles, combine harvesters, and as you can see over there, there's a barn. Check that out. I would, oh yeah, I wouldn't touch that. I'd, it's an old truck. Um, it's been crushed. That's what it looks like. Cockpit or something, isn't it? Yeah, it's been proper crushed. That. Then the steering wheel there. And dropped on its head. Yeah, guys, check this out inside this uh, this vehicle, this lorry. <laughs> there's a steering wheel. It is a steering wheel, isn't it? Is that a steering wheel? Yeah. So there's a steering wheel. Again, more machinery parts. I mean, this place is just absolutely scattered, look. But let's go inside the uh, barn. Let's go inside the barn and see what's inside. Oh, I'm gonna opt against going in there. Yeah. Yeah, don't blame me. All right, guys, as you can right see. Yeah, that structure looks like it could fall. Yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 it does, doesn't it? Now, as you can see up there, guys, it looks like the roof is just about to collapse in any minute now. So we ain't gonna go inside, but as you can see, there isn't much to actually show you. It's more of an empty shell. We will walk around. 
Mill, yeah. There's a bus. Oh, can you see that? I found something interesting. Further on down in the field is what looks like an abandoned bus. Right, so what I've just found out, I've found out a little bit of information about this bus. Basically, when illegal tour, cup, tour guides come up with tourists, like stalkers, I don't know if you guys have ever heard of stalkers, but they're illegal um, tour guides that bring people into Chernobyl. What they'd do is they'd camp here, and as you can see down there, it's like a man-made, like barbecue, where they'd cook their food and stuff. Now apparently what I've just been told, the bus itself is actually used to sleep on. Like to basically camp out, camp out the night or hide away in case somebody sees them. Alright so guys let's check out what a stalker's camp would look like. Okay, oh god it's extremely hot in there guys. Now yeah, as you can see. We've got a table inside, we've got like cups, stuff that people can cook, bottles of water, that'd be quite handy now, because I forgot to get myself some water. But yeah, this is where they'd come, camp out, sleep, uh, get out of the rain if it starts to rain, and basically hide away from security. The reason that they come out with the stalkers is because it is very, very quiet, and not a lot of people come here. So obviously this is a great hiding place for for them to come. So as you can see on the walls of this bus guys, people leave like little messages. So obviously when other people come here they can read that message and then that person will come and leave their own message themselves. So yeah, pretty interesting. <laughs> you need this. Hello stalkers, a greeting from ha ha Hasselt, Belgium. Okay. So that was that the last person, yeah. That probably was the last person to stay here, guys, but 2nd of the 8th, 19. Fellow Englishman, guys, Newcastle, UK. Lust for life. 25th of July, 19, 1am. So, guys, here as well is a map of Pripyat made by one of the stalkers. And as you can see, they've gone to a lot of effort to keep this from getting wet from the rain. They've actually covered it in plastic. So, yeah, as you can see, Pripyat River running around. Pripyat, the town itself. So that's pretty cool, they've gone through a lot of effort to make that. And yeah, I mean drinking cups to boil like hot water. Uh, don't know what that is. Napkins. Oh, napkins, okay. And we've got some napkins as well. Right, and this end of the bus here, guys, is obviously used as a bin. All the rubbish is literally thrown in there. But yeah, guys, this is accommodation for stalkers. Quite interesting to see. Actually, I don't know what's through this door. Let's have a look through this door. Oh, okay. Again, it's just, yeah, rubbish. Maybe beds. But yeah, guys, that is inside a stalker's camp. Hope you enjoyed that. Let's carry on and explore more of this cattle farm. Another barn with what looks like a burnt out moped or scooter. And then over here Another barn. Maybe would have been used to keep the vehicles, like the farm machinery inside. I'm not sure. What is this? That is a nail. Is your name? Nil. Nail? Nail, nil. Almost the same. For, for, for me it sounds exactly the same. Or nil. <laughs> where you, you kneel down, like that. Uh-huh. Kneel down. Yeah. Uh, also river, N river, you know, in Egypt. River Nile. A Nile, Nile, for me it's the same. Or Nile, Nile the orange <laughs> pill. <laughs> there's one combine. Now Luke was telling me there's about seven scattered around there. Yeah, check this out. Wow. 
Okay, this is more inter this is more incredible than I first thought. An actual full scale combine harvester. I got a brand new combine harvester. I'll give you the key. Damn. Oh, this is cool, isn't it? <laughs> so just hanging from this combine harvester. <laughs> Is a gas mask that you just put there. So yeah, in this small space, there's about seven combine harvesters just left there abandoned. There could be even more. This is just what we see in this small little area. I mean, there's there's more machinery over there as well. Damn. So guys, we've had a final count now, and we've actually counted about twelve. We can physically see twelve combine harvesters just left here, abandoned. Now these combine harvesters ain't cheap, they're about 80 grand for one combine harvester. So you can imagine the amount of money that's just been left here to, uh, yeah, just to decay and just rot away and rust and that is a lot of money down the drain. So Explorers, this series is slightly different to most people that are on YouTube. I mean, a lot of YouTubers just go to the main parts like Pripyat, Chernobyl, but we are actually showing you like Little villages outside of Chernobyl, like a cattle farm like this. I mean, these are the little things that a lot of people don't see. And this is what I wanted to show you guys, because things like this just get left forgotten. And these were a big part of the um, community, part of Chernobyl. I mean, without this cattle farm, there'd be no meat. And there'd be, it's just, yeah, I just had to come here and show you. So what have we actually seen so far? We've seen an abandoned village with the school. We've seen a part of the um, a village that was buried under the ground and now we've seen this cattle farm. We haven't even hit Pripyat yet guys and that is the main part. So yeah guys you are seeing stuff that not a lot of people have seen. Right explorers we've ran away from Igor now he's looking for us we, he doesn't know where we are. Nah I'm only joking. We've walked away a little bit further on down in the cattle field and I, I, right guys I'm not a farmer so I don't really know much about all this stuff but I'm presuming that thing in front of us would go on the back of the combine harvester and would fill up and that's where all your crops, your corn and stuff would fill up inside. If you're a farmer and I'm saying absolutely a load of crap in this video, let me know down below. But if I'm right, yeah, tell me that I'm right. I'd like to know that I'm right. So Luke has told me, he, he might be wrong, but I'm pretty sure he's right on this one, that this would go on the back of a tractor and it will cut up all the wheat or the corn and that that funnel thing there would throw it into the back of that container and that's where it'd be all stored. Guys, I think that's the cattle farm explored now. Let's carry on and see what else we can find on our way up to Pripyat. We've stopped off down at Chernobyl a river port now and as you can see in the distance, there is a few abandoned boats on the shoreline. So guys, I just found some more information about this river port. Basically, the boats would come down. It's the biggest river port on the Pripyat River and basically the boats would come down here and they would get repaired. They'd get repaired here. If there's anything wrong with the boats they'd come in here and yeah just basically get repaired. I've just walked to the other side of the river port and again we've got some more abandoned ships out there and behind us there's like a bridge that you can walk up and get to the other side of the river port. Can I come here? Can I come say hello? Hello mate, here we go, our first Chernobyl dog, hello buddy, oh, he's a good boy, eh, you're a good boy, I've got no food for you, I've got no food, what's your name, eh, what's your name, I'll tell you what, all the dogs are so friendly around here, they must be so used to humans coming over now, well it's lunchtime now, we're having our lunch and we have arrived at our restaurant where we're going to be eating, also this is going to be our accommodation for tonight, so this is the Chernobyl Hotel, so we're going to be staying here tonight, and later on, I'll give you a full-on tour of this place. And here we go. This is the lunch. This is what I've been looking forward to. Also, the one thing that I have been looking forward to the most is this compot. Ever since I come to Chernobyl the first time, I've just this is the best drink that you can get. My favourite drink, and I'm so looking forward to having some. Luke's never had some, so I'm looking forward to see his reaction as well. 
But now guys, it is time to eat and I will catch you guys back outside when we continue the tour. Right guys, we are quite close to reactor number four. Now what, what you're looking at now is a cooling tower, which was built to cool down reactor five and six. Now, as you can see, the thing is absolutely gigantic. Now I'm hoping we can get inside and show you the sheer size. I think that is what the plan is. We're gonna go over and get inside the cooling tower. So I've just been informed by Igor that inside this water is fish and around the water is beavers as well. And as you can see here, this tree has actually been taken down by a beaver. You can see where its teeth have actually gnawed away at it. It's incredible guys, you just don't think about how much wildlife is actually in Chernobyl. Like beavers, I would not have even thought twice about beavers being there. Horses I know about, moose. It's crazy, I would love just to do a full documentary about the uh, animals in this, in Chernobyl. Right guys, we've made it to the water tower now. We're not supposed to be here, so we've got a whisper. But our tour guide has taken us here and says be very, very quiet. Oh, oh, okay. When you, you know, when you scream here, sounds stays here. It doesn't, yeah. So we are allowed in there, really, then? You was just having us on, was you? Is she playing games? <laughs> right, that was absolutely incredible, that was. That sounded like a fighter jet going over. Alright, so guys, if you just heard that, that was, well, you, you're going to hear that. If you didn't hear that, then you've got something wrong with your hearing. That was incredible. So Igor just literally threw a rock and the whole place, honestly, it was like a fighter jet going over. Alright, here we go, guys. <laughs> I love it. Absolutely love it. How about this one? weird even just walking around whispering to you guys as well you can still hear the sound echoing off the side of this water tower so yeah reactor five and six was never actually put into operation so this water tower was actually never used which is a shame just you just think how long it took to build this it must have took oh, i don't know a bloody long time guys this is absolutely fascinating Right guys, so interesting on the ground in this uh, cooling tower is the remains of the Chernobyl giant that used to live here and his remains are just left there on the ground now for you guys to come and see. <laughs> now I'm joking, I don't know what kind of animal that would have been though. Whatever it was had really thick bones. <laughs> yeah, just a really weird place to see a load of bones. Guys, I almost forgot to show you this artwork. Wow. I'm absolutely speechless. I can't believe I missed that when I walked in. That is incredible. So uh, guys, a little bit more information about this artwork. It was actually an Australian artist that come here and illegally put this up. So guys, this is the actual image that the Australian artist used to yeah, spray paint that image onto the wall. You see a red suit. Ah, uh, okay. Right, guys. We're doing something quite incredible, actually. We are getting very close to reactor number five. And not a lot of people, again, like I said, we're doing stuff that not a lot of people have done before, have done. I don't think we are actually allowed to be this close, but we're doing it anyway. We're doing it anyway, but there it is. Just over those trees, 
It's reactor number five, the reactor that never got finished. And as you can see, the cranes are still there. We've got to sneak our way in and hopefully we can get into reactor number five. How incredible would that be? But yeah, guys, as you can see around us, there are cranes that was used to build this reactor. Now, that red metal that you can see that has gone rusty on the outside was supposed to be an esophagus that was quickly built, stop radiation, getting inside reactor number five. Now they did it very, very quickly and apparently they didn't weld it very well because obviously they wanted to get it up as quick as possible. But now some of the sheets are starting to fall down. And as you can see again, the cranes, these cranes have just been left here since they stopped work and a few of them have actually collapsed. But yeah guys, walking up to reactor number five, there's some outbuildings there. I want to show you guys inside. Wow. This is just one huge warehouse. Nothing too special to show you, but it's just one big warehouse before we get closer to reactor number five. You might be right, Luke. That might actually be one of the cranes that collapsed. So yeah, like I said before guys, one of the cr some of the cranes have actually collapsed and this could be one of the cranes, which I think it is. Oh yeah, how incredible. Yeah, that is, that's the, that's the top of the crane, isn't it? Yeah. I bet that fell with a fud. So guys, we're in reactor number five, and that six on there means that we're six meters above the ground level. This is absolutely incredible. I can't believe we're in reactor at number five. There you go, guys. We've now doubled that, and we're 12 meters above the ground now. So guys, that red metal that I was showing you outside reactor number five, we are actually inside now and you can see it closer how quickly that they welded these sheets of metal together look that's not a good job at all they just wanted to get it up as quick as possible to stop radiation getting in to this uh, reactor now if I look down that is how high we are now oh I ain't gonna lie that walk up here that was a bit of a killer but it was worth it. I mean, check out this view. You've got the water tower over there that we were just in. And if I pan around, in the distance, if I zoom in, you can see the famous Dugar Radar. I mean, I feel absolutely privileged to be up here. Incredible. On top of reactor, number five all right guys i can't really show you much because unfortunately me being an idiot my torch died but we are actually stood in reactor number five now where the reactor would have actually been but all you can see is darkness but i mean what an incredible size this room is and if i echo woo. so guys we are standing where the rods of this reactor would have actually gone so as you can see that is the top and the rods would have gone all the way down but i can't show you how far down it actually goes but let's just tell you it is very very deep so guys that is where we just were inside there we we'll come back outside now i'm absolutely gutted that my battery died on my um torch but we're climbing even higher now so uh, i've got to climb up here and might actually get to the very top of reactor number five this is actually really sketchy. Oh, I don't actually like this. I ain't gonna lie to you, that was absolutely petrifying. I mean, you know that I'm getting better at heights now. Look, just look how high we are. But that was a shaky little ladder. Check this out as well. 
we're right, we're near enough on top of reactor number five, and yet there's trees growing. That's bizarre. Oh my god. I don't think we could actually get a better view of that. Top of reactor number five. Just looking over at reactor number four. And it's actually quite breathtaking. I've just been told that this is probably the best view of reactor four that you can get in Chernobyl. Absolutely spectacular. I'm actually um, a bit speechless to be honest with you. Right, you know, I was talking earlier on about the cranes that collapsed around reactor number five. Now this is one of the cranes, as you can see. So this would have been turbine hall, turbine hall for number five, and further on down would have been the turbine hall for number six. But yeah, let's just look at that crane, just completely collapsed. <laughs> Check this out. We're on top of reactor number five. There's only a dog up here. Hello mate. Hello. How did you get up here? Probably the same way we did, but you don't expect to see a dog up here. That's incredible. <laughs> well, we would not expect to be on top of reactor number five and see a dog up here. You come to explore reactor number five as well, have you? That was absolutely incredible. Reactor number five. That's a tick off the list, we've explored it now. We're gonna carry on it and see some more. Absolutely, this has been probably the highlight of the trip so far. Right guys, we are back at the grocery store that we was at yesterday and what we're getting now is some plastic bags for our shoes. This is him, you see? Okay, yeah, I see. And uh, you see pre petrol sign, no any trees, no any forest. How weird because is that? he buried red forest. Okay. Key is liquidator. Yes, uh, December uh, was in 1886. Yeah. Uh, uh, December 1986. 1986. And where's he stood there? So just, uh, just uh, uh, old sarcophagus completed. Jeez. This is, this is uh, spring time 1986. 1986. Okay. So you see. No, no forest. No, nope, no, no trees, trees at all. No, no grass. Just uh, prepared road sign and sarcophagus. That's, that's crazy. Nice to meet you, hero. In in hero, a hero. church, in church, drive. Uh, he is going to church now. <coughs> oh, okay. This is, yeah. So explorers, that guy that we just met behind us was actually one of the liquidators in 1986. And what he did is he buried, he helped bury the red forest. Now, them photos that I just showed you. That was actually him. And as you saw Pripyat sign, there was no trees about. So they actually cut down all the trees and buried them underneath the ground. Guys, check this out. As you can see, this fox isn't in very good condition and he lives in the red forest, as Igor just said. Come on, got some food for you. Don't go. Oh, he's gone. Right, explorers, our first stop for today is at an abandoned train station. Now, the trains that would run through this train track were cargo trains, so they'd bring stuff in and out. Now, as you can see, what I've been told, this train could still be used now. I mean, it could still run. But no, it's just been left there now, just to like decay, rot away. As you can see, very rusty. And apparently, what I've been told by Igor is some people could actually see a fire on the tracks. I think that's the reason, half the reason, that it was stopped being used. And obviously the disaster as well. But yeah. They're a lot different to the trains that we have in the UK. I mean, they're a lot bigger as well. 
I'm guessing this is where some of the passengers would have gone as well. Yeah, unfortunately we can't get inside, which is a shame. That would be good to show you guys inside one of these trains. If I could put the gimbal up, I don't know if you guys can see inside. This is the advantage of being six foot two. I can actually show you guys stuff that is quite high up. But I don't know if you can see anything on there. And as well, we've got this crane. This crane may have been used to lift stuff from out the back of one of the trains. So if you've got heavy cargo, you need a crane to lift it off the back of the train. Look, I mean, look at the size of the hook. So this train actually passed a test in 2011 and was said that it could still be used today. So this train isn't technically abandoned, but the trains that we are going to now, which are further on down the track, are abandoned and not in use. So uh, yeah, lead the way, Igor, lead the way. Right, so as I said earlier on, the trains that was used to go down these tracks were cargo trains. As you can see, trains here would have been carrying supplies, uh, materials or anything that would have come from like Moscow all the way down to Chernobyl. And the crane that we saw may have been used to lift the materials out the back of these um, cargo trains. As you can see again guys, nature is now taking over the train tracks. We've got like bushes growing, all sorts of like plants growing. You can no longer see the track further on down. Ah, and there actually is a train carriage. Oh shit! <laughs> I tripped. Urban exploring, guys, is very dangerous, and I almost face planted the floor then. <laughs> Oh, I'm going in. Oh wow, still got the chairs inside as well. So this was definitely a people carrier train, a passenger train. Look at the roof as well. The roof is literally caved in. This is so cool. I'm not gonna go any further inside because I don't know how dangerous it is. Looks like the floor is like caving in in some places as well. This, is an abandoned Ukrainian train that would have brought people into Chernobyl. Maybe workers. And then this way. Oh yeah, damn. Look at the roof is completely caved in on this carriage. Well, I've walked further on down the track. I actually thought that there was only one carriage to this train. But as you can see, there is another carriage here as well. And look on the floor. Some sort of, I don't know if that's a military coat or something, or just a coat that used to belong to somebody that used to ride this train. Bottles. Yeah, we're down the other end now. That's where I was standing just a minute ago, on the other end of that carriage. Come further on down. Maybe that was the engine room. Yeah, as you can see, the engine just on the floor, and above is a lot of like mechanical like pipes and stuff. So maybe, just maybe, that was the engine room. I might be wrong. Again, I don't know a lot about trains. Guys, check this out. I found this quite funny. On the outside of this carriage, can you guess what that is? That is actually a fridge. What genius thought of that idea to stick the fridge on the outside of the carriage? Saving space, I'm telling you. Saving space. I mean, that looked pretty weird if it was in the UK though and that fridge was outside one of our windows. But I just thought that was funny, a fridge on the outside of this wagon. Right, so apparently guys, on the end of this track, are more abandoned trains and apparently these abandoned trains are completely tipped over completely tipped over and some of them are on on their roofs so yeah it's gonna be interesting to see how good is my balance see if I can walk the whole length of this track on the actual track nope I'm off 
Now apparently the tracks in Ukraine are slightly wider than what we've got in Europe. I don't know how true that is because I look at the tracks in the UK and they actually look wider than these ones. But I've been told so it's got to be true, it's got to be true. Alright so explorers we've walked a little bit further down the track now and we've come across the proper abandoned stuff now. Locomotive carriage this one. This is where the engine would have been. I'll check this out. I don't know how well you can see it. But this is inside the engine room. How incredible is that? Now this would have been a diesel train. Again guys, if you are huge train enthusiasts, you are gonna absolutely love coming to Chernobyl and seeing this. So that is one of many that are abandoned in this little area. As you can see, this carriage is completely on its side. This one is still upright. This one almost looks like a bus, this carriage. Now this is the people carrier. This is where the, pe the passengers would have sat. And check that out. Wow. Okay. As you can see, there was insta insulation in the roof, like foam insulation. I don't know how safe it is to walk down. I have been told by Igor not to come in there, so I'm kind of slightly breaking the rules, but I don't think I mind too much. And on the floor, you can see like little motors or parts of the engine just scattered around. Here guys, you can actually see part of the engine of the train. Now I don't know what part it is, again I don't know a lot about trains, but if you guys do know, leave comments, leave comments down below, it will help me out, like work out what piece of the train actually is. Now I know this is the locomotive, which I've um, found out, is the engine room of these trains, which is pretty damn incredible, if I may say so. You can actually see, again, more of the engine in this locomotive. No, they're not, conti they not contaminated enough yes. for sending them to um, storage back. of nuclear waste, but they're not clean enough for recycling. Mm. Uh, they yes. just uh, simply left here. So as Igor said, these trains, they're contaminated, but not enough to be buried for nuclear waste but they were high enough to never be used again so yeah they're just basically left there now but the story that he told us before and he said you'll never believe us and I was like yeah we'll believe you we'll believe you he said Godzilla come here and destroyed all the trains <laughs> just completely come through and was like rah, rah, rah. so yeah as you can tell he's a great tour guide and he's got a hell of a sense of humour as well. <laughs> Alright so guys, what you can see here is a tank. Now this tank was used to clean the most contaminated areas of Chernobyl and was actually used to help cut down the Red Forest. Now it's still very contaminated and nobody knows why it's still here. They don't know if they just forgot about it. But we're going to find out now. As you can see, it's reading 8.64. Oh damn. Gamma up to 27, 19. Oh my god. 1.5 millizeros or 1500 microsievers. Microsievers. Or 1400 microsievers or just 1.4 millizeros. That's incredible. That's even away from it as well. Yes. That's like a distance away and it's still reading pretty high. And the closer we get... I can't believe I got my head so close to this. <laughs> it's unreal. 
So it's incredible how radioactive this tank actually is. And it's still, it's incredible that it's still here and it hasn't been moved and hasn't been destroyed. Right, that is the first stop over. And what a stop it was, seeing them abandoned trains and train station and that tank, that tank at the end, one of the most contaminated vehicles here, was used to clear up part of the most contaminated places in Chernobyl. And you saw on the guide account just how high we was reading. God knows where it hasn't been destroyed and buried. Even Igor, he doesn't know, he doesn't know. Maybe the government forgot about it. That's just what he said. But yeah, we're gonna move on to our next location now, guys. I'll oh, catch you there. Right, guys, we've left the, the abandoned trains now. What we've done is we've stopped at the Red Forest. Now, as you can see, there's a mound over there. That mound is where the trees were actually buried. So basically, they would dig a trench, and at the bottom of the trench, they would put clay, so the radiation wouldn't sink any deeper. It would just get to the clay, and that's as far as it would go. And on top, they would put fresh soil on top of the um, trench to cover the trees. Now that is what this mound is here. Now I think we're gonna test out how radioactive it actually is. So there we go guys, we're on the mound, as you can see, radioactive sign, and we are reading. Not bad. 1.15, which is very low, considering below us is uh, radioactive not trees. Not great, but not terrible. If you guys have watched the HBO series of Chernobyl, you're gonna know what this bridge is. Now this bridge has been nicknamed the Bridge of Death. Now in the series, you saw people of Pripyat come to the bridge and watch the reactor burning. Now if I carry on walking down there, right in the distance, behind the trees, you can see reactor number four. And this is where like family members of people that work there, people that lived in Pripyat would have stood and watched as the reactor just burnt. Right, we are back in Pripyat now. And what we are about to do is probably one of the most dangerous things I have ever done since exploring. We are going into the basement of Pripyat Hospital. Now this is where all the firefighters who are trying to put out the fire in Chernobyl, Reactor 4. This is where all the firemen's clothes and gear was thrown underneath. So obviously they come to the hospital, very radioactive, radioactive poisoning. The doctors took off all of their gear and just threw it in the basement. Now this is highly radioactive. I do not encourage anybody to go into this basement. We're doing it so you guys don't have to. What we've got to do now is gear up get our suits on, cover our shoes up. I'm not gonna lie, I'm a little bit nervous, but at the same time, I've really wanted to see this for a very long time. Right, gonna gear up and we will head to the hospital. Take your seat. Yep. Put your hand. I don't know how well you can hear me, guys. I'm suited and booted now. What, right down the bottom or in there? Here you go. Guys, this feels absolutely surreal to be down there. So explorers, this is our first sighting of the fireman's shoes. And as you can tell, the guide counter has gone up to 28, 40, 43. If I go closer, eighty-seven. Ninety-one, almost at a hundred. And all this was firefighters' clothes and safety equipment. As you can see, they've got the safety clothes over there. Boots down there. And again, I'm gonna put it closer to it. As you can see, it jumps, I'll take it away. So 73, if I pull it closer, 
it jumps right up to 70, 79, 86, 90. We're going to read 100 there. Yeah, 99. 103.906. 106. Damn. Even now it's reading, and we're not even we're not even putting the guide counter close. It's reading a 52, and we're not even putting it down towards the uh, equipment. 30. 61. Wow, that's going absolutely crazy. Almost a thousand. Look at you. Two thousand. That's incredible. That is very, very dangerous. So that's how much you'd get in your um who was here for an hour. That's how much radiation would be going through your body and how much you would pick up. 702 and almost 2,000 we read on that. Firefighter's trousers. Not as radioactive as the shoes, obviously, because the shoes connect to the ground and you pick up the radiation and the particles of the shoes, but still very radioactive. So this is a fireman's protective coat. 28, 30. Not as radioactive, but check out this. So guys, the slippers that you can see here were from the nurses and the doctors who actually worked here. Now obviously they got in contact with the firefighters. So even their clothes and their shoes would have to have been thrown down here because they were contaminated. Now in this room in front of us was the mattresses that the firefighters would have slept on in the hospital and laid on. Now obviously it's not going to be as contaminated as the shoes but because their bodies are contaminated these had to be thrown away as well. Right explorers, let's carry on and walk down and see what else we can see in the basement. Again, looks like another workshop. As you can see, there's desks, chairs, all sorts in there. Even medication, by the look of it, right at the back in that cabinet. Oh, there's an elevator as well. So there's an elevator to get you down into the basement. Obviously, it takes you from ground floor, ground um, second floor, down into the basement. It's like some sort of fire down there. Again, this room is absolutely littered with like slippers, shoes, everything that the nurses, doctors, maybe firefighters, I don't think any firefighter with clothing's in there, would have been thrown away. And as you can see, right in front of us on that shelf, in perfect condition is a pair of shoes. And as you can imagine, they would have been left there from 1986. And they're still in that perfect condition. Never been touched. Now the further we walk away, the less contaminated this basement is. Obviously right at the beginning, there was the firefighters clothes, shoes, which is the most contaminated objects down here. Old beer bottle. But yeah, if I turn my torch off, guys, this is how dark it is. Let's turn the light back on. Now, as I walk through here, you could just imagine the panic and the chaos that would have gone on around us. The nurses would have been down here, throwing all the firefighters' clothes away as fast as they could. 
Now as you can see, the paint are peeling off from a lot of these boilers machinery. It gives it that extra airy feel as we walk through it. Again, explorers, before we leave this basement, Firefighters trousers, firefighters shoes, safety jacket, nurses and doctors slippers, just all left down there. It's getting extremely hot down here as well. Hundred and seven point six. Now this room, out of all the rooms in the basement, has got the most equipment from the firefighters in there. So these tanks that you can see on the floor of the basement are actually oxygen tanks. They were used for patients that were struggling to breathe and helped them to breathe a little bit better. Now as well, these have been thrown down there. I don't think they're as contaminated as the rest of the stuff down there. But they didn't want to take any chances and just threw them down there into the basement. And that's where they've been ever since. Again, more oxygen tanks, crates. Now this is a trolley that I'm guessing would have brought like tea, coffee, maybe medication as well, drinks to the patients, but most likely medication that the nurses would have pushed through to the patients. It is absolutely filled. The floor is completely covered in this room with um, patients' clothes, nurses' clothes, Maybe some firefighters closing in, not sure. Right, explorers. Like I said, it's not a good idea to be down here too long. So that is the basement explored. I think I've been down here long enough now. I don't want a tenth fate. I think it's time to leave. Oh, fresh air. Oh, I've never wanted to see the outside so bad. And there we have it, explorers. The basement of the hospital has now been explored. I've shown you. I will never go back down there ever again. Now it's time to get off these suits. Whew. That was an experience. Guys, we are now back outside. I feel so much better taking all that safety equipment off. It got so hot down there. Also, having the mask on. God, you scared me. God, that dog just scared me. <laughs> you just scared the hell out of me, doggo. Right, before I was rudely interrupted, also, my glasses started to steam up as well, so I was struggling to see down there. And at one point, I didn't see where the rest of them had gone. So I thought I, I took a wrong turn or something. But yeah, now we've explored that guys, we are now heading to the morgue. That is another place that I haven't seen yet, so it's pretty interesting. Also, check out this bike. A kiddie's bike. Outside the hospital. Hello boy. You play? Hello boy. You play? What's that? No. All the dogs here love Igor. They come straight to him, they want to play with him. Me and Luke, they know we're foreigners. So they're like, right, we're not going to come anywhere near you. This one's a little bit more timid. He's uh, proper wild, that one. Yeah, it looks almost like a husky. So as we was in the basement, I told you guys about one of the entrances being blocked up. And this is it. You remember me showing you the sand that was in one of those rooms? Now this is the top. Now this would have been one of the entrances to get into the basement, but now it is completely filled in. Right explorers, we are still in Pripyat Hospital. We are at the children's ward. Now what I'm going to show you 
is actually quite sad. In this room here, as you can see, very small beds. Now this is where the patients, the children patients, would come, sleep, lie down, and spend most of their time. And it's actually quite sad to see. Now in this room, dead ahead of us, is a baby's cot. Next to it, it's like surgery lights. As I walk through this hospital, I think in my head the pain that some of these children went through. It must have been absolutely horrendous. So we finished in the children's ward, that was only a, a quick stop. Now, we are coming into the morgue. Oh, this is creepy. There we go. This is the slab where the body would have been put. Come into another room, and there's another table. As you can see on this table, we have got a human body. The skeleton inside. More equipment on this shelf. Glass bottle with some sort of liquid inside. Again, not too sure what it is. So guys, we've come to the other end of the morgue now and we've come across this shelf. Now inside are bottles of human parts. Maybe kidney stones, Whatever in it was the cause of death for the body. And they would jar them up and just left. Now if there's any doctors watching this video, leave a comment down below what you think are inside these bottles. There's another cabinet on the other side of this room. More glass jars. We're not actually sure what are in these ones. Maybe the same thing. And the stuff inside has just been taken, I don't know. We finished at the hospital now. We've come to school number one. The first school to be built. And the first school, as you can tell, to collapse. Now as you can see, up in that corner are tables, chairs and all the belongings that are still left in the school. This is actually the first building in Pripyat that I've actually seen collapse. So about five or six years ago, roughly that time, this is when this school actually collapsed. There is actually a tree starting to grow up through all the rubble. So that shows you how long this has been collapsed for. They reckon in about a couple more years, this part of the building will collapse as well. So there are five schools in Pripyat. Two of the schools actually have a shooting range. So the boys in the school would have actually been trained to shoot guns. The girls wouldn't do it, just the boys. Now, most of the schools would have a bomb shelter and a greenhouse. Now, I've just walked past the greenhouse. I'm not sure if we're going in it. Nope. 
tour guide Igor is looking at me now saying where are you going? We are now in a stadium, a sports stadium. Now what you can see here is a volleyball court. Now behind us here is the entrance to get into the stadium. Now people would come to watch like the sports and play sports which is pretty fascinating and again as you can see nature is completely taken over. I'm pretty sure guys were still in the stadium. Igor has walked on this way. Maybe there's more interesting sports stuff to show you guys. I don't know. I know we are heading to school number five, the latest school to be built, which was built in 1985, a year before the disaster happened. So this stadium that we're in, the sports stadium, was never opened. The official opening date for the stadium was May the 9th and obviously the disaster happened before and it was never opened. I'm going to go into the grandstand now and show you what view the visitors and the audience would have had. And go all the way to the top. It's amazing to think, just like the theme park, this was never opened and never used. If it wasn't for them trees, you would actually get a decent view from up here. And it is higher than you think. I want you guys to guess how many people you could probably fit on this grandstand. What do you reckon? About a thousand? And you can see all the benches and chairs were made from wood and the decay is completely taken over. Now maybe at the top of this stand is toilets or somewhere that you can get refreshments, food. Well, I'm not too sure actually. It goes underneath, under the, under the stand. Right, so guys, I am now behind the stand. Maybe these rooms were used for changing rooms. Maybe toilets. I'm not quite sure. They're just empty rooms. Empty rooms, I can't tell you what they are. If I go further on down, yeah, we've got a toilet there. Let's go back through the corridor and go underneath the stand if we can. I think we can. There's some stairs to the right. All these doors banging. Okay. Look how long it is. It's the entire length of the stand that we're underneath now. This room is directly under the stand. That's where the seats are. I'm guessing the athletes would have used this either to get changed or get ready for what they're about to go out and do. Now there's a door here, to the right, that leads you to the bottom of the stand. Is it the bottom or are we halfway? No, nope, we are halfway, okay. That was a tour of the grandstand of this sports arena, or this sports stadium. I'm gonna carry on, apparently there's a shooting range that we're gonna explore now, or we'll see you down at the bottom. We've come now to school number five. This is the latest school, yeah? To be built in 1985, a year before the nuclear disaster. So that shooting range that I was talking about earlier on belongs to this school. And people from other schools would have come to use this shooting range as well. This is, uh, 
cool school. Cool school. Cool school. Too cool for school. So there isn't much to explore in this school. A lot of the rooms are empty. So we're going to go straight to the shooting range and not waste any time. It's like most abandoned places you come to. Most of the rooms are empty. On the floor here, guys, is Cold War gas masks. Now, these gas masks would protect students from a war, from a, an attack from like the Americans or the British. And you can see inside. That was quite cool, actually. Right, so we've just entered the shooting range of school number five, and as you can see. There are thousands of gas masks on the floor. Children's gas masks, baby gas masks. Also, there are crates of gas masks in there that have not even been opened. Now we've actually found the shooting range. And as you can see, how long and how echoey it is. Again on the shooting range, more gas masks. And... What's bag. that, a belt? Bag. A bag to put bag. your belongings in? To, to put the gas mask and the filter. Ah, okay, the gas mask and the filter would actually go inside the bag. Well, that's the filter. Okay, what is it? Maybe to put on your face for to make rubber, rubber go to your face smoother. Got ya. So the gas mask goes on easier. Yeah. So right, we're going to take a walk down this shooting range. Now apparently, apparently at the end is targets. I'm still going guys, still walking. So here on the ground are the targets that I was talking about. And as you can see, we've got one in the center and a few on the outside. So his aim was pretty damn good. Now if I set the camera all the way back, yeah, that just shows you how long this shooting range actually is. Are they bullet holes? Yeah, that's sent there, there's the wood. It's got to be, innit? It's got to be. Yeah, bullet holes. But these are the targets that the pupils would have actually shot at. Now obviously the guns that they would have used would have been air rifles, not actual, like, proper guns. Because as you can see, the targets are only, like, little pinholes. Now I wish when I was a kid growing up, there was a shooting range at our school, it would have made lessons a lot more exciting. Instead, we never had anything exciting like that, apart from sports, football, just all the basic stuff that us English people had to learn. Not like schools in Ukraine, where they actually got taught to shoot guns. Right, that is the shooting range explored now, guys. Let's carry on and see what else Igor has up his sleeve. Cut, 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 cut. Right, before we go into the explore a little further, I've got a huge apology to make. And before you guys absolutely crucify me in the comments section, I just wanna say, in this next clip you're about to watch, I'm saying the word kindergarten completely wrong. I'm calling it a kindergarten. Now in the UK, we call it a nursery, and I realize that you Americans out there call it a kindergarten. So before, you guys absolutely kill me in the comment section. I just want to say a huge apology for pronouncing kindergarten completely wrong. Right, let's carry on with the explore and I hope you guys don't crucify me too much. Right, where we're going now used to be a kindergarten. But after the nuclear re reactor exploded, it got turned into a laboratory for testing like soil, trees, plants just to see how radioactive that they are and what different parts of Chernobyl and Pripyat were affected the most. So we're going to go inside now and show you what the laboratory looks like inside. Now what you can see on this table here are like experiment tests or some sort of like equipment used to do these experiments and to do these testing on the plants and everything that needed testing. All right, so guys, this is proof that this was an actual kindergarten that got like cartoons drawn on the wall as we got the stairs. Now, apparently there's a room 
with a lot of equipment still left inside, which Igor is going to show us now. Oh wow, and I think we found it. Oh, this is incredible. Look at this. Samples. So as you can see on the floor guys, there are samples just scattered absolutely everywhere. Now this would be filled with like ash from plants, this could be soil from around the area. Just to be tested to see how radioactive plant life and nature got after the disaster. Now the way that they um, test radioactive plants is they would burn them until they're ash and they would test it through the ash. And all, all of this would be filled with like plant ash all on the floor as well. Is this exactly the same stuff would you say? I guess uh, yeah? inside, this inside it's, it is not, I don't, also ash uh, okay. from, from some... A tree or something yes, maybe? Yes, maybe. Now, as you can see... Or that, maybe this is the soil, I don't know. Ah, it looks like soil actually. Soil, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It looks, so, looks soil. Also, something else which is quite fascinating. Where all of these samples are stored, are children's lockers from the kindergarten. So if I open this, inside, just full of samples. So maybe in this laboratory as well, they tested radiation inside fish. Now in this um, glass jar, as you can see, are little cut up bits of fish. So it could have been animals tested as well. So we're inside another room guys. Now this room would have been used to like, um, test out grass. But yeah, if I come over here, basically that is the name of the grass up there. 1937 is probably the number of the sample. And below it is 27th of the 6th, 95 is when that sample was taken. And I've been looking at most of the samples around here, and most of them were done in the 90s. It's hard to believe that this was actually a kindergarten, seeing all these samples there. You think kids would have been here having fun at school and then after the disaster scientists come in took over the kindergarten and turned it into a laboratory for testing radiation in plants also on our way out we've just found these uh, tubs and inside is water so they obviously tested the water as well for radio radiation and as you can see there's stuff growing inside it now but like they've been here for such a long time some sort of like algae is growing inside them and again below more liquid right so this here this blue machine was an oven now this oven was used to burn like wood and turn it into ash plant to burn and turn it into ash so this was the machine that turned everything into ash so it could have been tested for radiation now Igor has said that he's found a sample which is very contaminated as you can see it's going up to five six Seven. Everything in this laboratory is um, radioactive, but this sample here more than the rest of it. One more time. Zero. Now one. Straight up to eight. Right, this is the last room that we're going to explore inside this laboratory slash kindergarten. Now as you can see, this is the last remains of the kindergarten just left there. So you've got like children's building blocks, uh, you have like a page of a book, and a box with some trains on it, and some toys, just basically toys are left there. We have now left the laboratory slash kindergarten. Now we are seeing something now which is pretty incredible. We are here next to the famous claw. So the claw was used to remove radioactive material from around reactor number four. Now Luke's got the guider counter. This thing is still very radioactive. And there it is. Yeah, if you keep that there.
Now I read an article online and it was over the news in the UK that this claw is so radioactive that if you touched it it would kill you. That's not true because look, check this out, if it was if that was true I go ah. ah no! Oh no it is true, it is true <laughs> Obviously it is radioactive because it was used to remove some of the most um, contaminated um, materials around reactor number four. But it's been left here for so long, the worst of it's just gone. So that is the claw explored. It is time to carry on and get some lunch. So guys, the story behind this photo that you can see here is a lot of people thought that people come to Pripyat and they looted a lot. But that was a complete myth. What they actually did is they went in and threw them out the window to be buried. And as you can see in this photograph, everyone's belongings have just been launched out the window, onto the ground, literally just to be buried. Oh, look at it. Personal what? belongings from Pripyat Town. Damn. You, look, that is actually... Maybe something was stolen by this man. I cannot, <laughs> I cannot search his pocket. No, 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 no. no. But in this, like, generally. Dude, you better not have anything. Can I see that <laughs> other picture? The other side. It looks like a, it looks like the dump. It looks like if you went to the dump and dropped your rubbish yeah, off. Yeah, the skip. Yes, yes. That is mental. Right, so walking around Pripyat today, guys, the one thing that I've noticed more than anything is the trees. Now, obviously, we're in the summer now. The trees have come alive. The leaves are all out, it is green. Guys, if you haven't checked out my first series, go over now and check it out. There'll be a, a pin somewhere in the top corner. Check it out, and then you can see the difference between the winter time and the summer time. We come and all the trees were dead. And it had a more of an eerie feeling. Now it has more of like, I don't know. But it just shows you how nature just takes over absolutely everything. I've only been in Pripyat for like five minutes and I can already tell there is a lot more people here already than there was when we first come before the HBO series dropped. I mean already I can see two massive tour groups. Now that might be all we see in here but to see that already that says to me a lot of people are coming over here just to see it since the HBO series. So uh don't know. So guys, if you can remember this from my last series, through that door is the theatre. Now, as there's so many people here, there is less chance of getting in there now without being caught. So we're not going inside, just in case. So guys, we're now in the community centre. And this is something that I didn't see last time I was here. A massive boxing ring. That is big, isn't it? That's bigger than a normal boxing ring, isn't it? I don't know if this is an oversized boxing ring or this is an official boxing ring, I'm not sure. But yeah, this is where they come and obviously have boxing matches. I mean, behind us, we've got like a gymnastic, we call them horses, didn't we, in the UK? But yeah, so you'd have gymnastics, boxing. This is quite a cool room though. Like the old round room. 360 degree view of outside. Okay, another swimming pool. Okay, this is another thing that I didn't see on the first time I kind of prep yet. So obviously you've got the main swimming pool. This is like the swimming pool inside the community center. There's still water inside it. Is there like a leak in the roof or something? Do you want to go for a swim? Go on Luke. Do do one lap. But yeah, I didn't, I didn't know this was there to be honest with you. I only thought there was the main swimming pool and the little one that was beside it. I didn't know there was one actually in the community centre as well. I could actually go for a swim now. Not in that I wouldn't, but I could actually go for a swim. It's so humid today that I actually could. You look tiny next to it mate.
Now, apart from the view, guys, what we have below us is a, a sports hall. Now, you can see there's indoor football ready set up. One goal down there and another goal down there. And again, this is another part that I didn't see the first time that I come. So we are seeing stuff that I didn't see in the first series, which I'm surprised about. There must be loads that I haven't seen. So that hotel that I was showing you earlier on, I'm now going in. I'm going in on my own as well. Without so uh, the guide. Without the guide, so wish me luck, guys. Wish me luck. All right, stairs are right ahead. But I've got a funny feeling that while I'm on my own, Igor is going to hide behind me somewhere and jump out on me. I just got that feeling. <laughs> well, I'll make sure that he walks out. Right, he's gone, he's gone. Right, I'm on my own. Honestly, guys, such a great tour guide, Igor is. Shown us so much stuff that I didn't think that we'd see today. I think the highlight of the trip has definitely been going into Reactor number five. So explorers, we have now made it at the top of the hotel. I'm absolutely out of breath. I really need to stop smoking. I really do, I need to get myself fit. When I was younger, I had a bomb up those stairs, like nothing. But as you can see, the view again, absolutely spectacular. You've got the Reactor number four over there. We've got the apartment blocks over there. And if I walk over here, The main square. <sighs> Nature always wins. And this tree is one example of it. Check it out, it is trying to eat the merry-go-round. So Igor, Igor has just gone off into one of the buildings. Now he says that he's going to get something which could be one of the most radioactive objects in Pripyat. This is polonium. Polonium. And you are Litvinian today. Ah, okay. Can if you he, open it? If you can open it. I, by your mouse. I... <laughs> he's <laughs> trying to kill us. <laughs> this definitely shows that this should not be opened. Oh, it's coming. It's indeed uh, plutonium welded. It's uh, pluton plutonium welded. That tiny bit that's in that bag is supposed to be, would you say, one of one of the most radioactive things that you've seen in, in Pripyat? Yes. Yeah? I remember, since this morning, fire. So that is the radio radiation that we've had in our body for the whole day, which is next to nothing. It's like five, uh, 0 0.55. Uh, 0 0.005 millisievert or 5 microsieverts since this morning it's nothing so that's for the whole day that we've been out except all 100 yeah okay holy fuck it's holy fuck balls jesus 18, 19, 20. And it's still going up as well. It will be going up, uh, going up forever. It just won't stop now. Non-stop, because it's collecting. This is total. Is that the total for the day, did you say? That that's going up? Yeah, that's the total that's going up now. Oh, shit. So that... So uh, usually in normal life, uh, we go, uh, we get, uh, we get in around uh, three from three to four per day. So this is almost like ten. Oh, this is almost like twenty days worth, isn't it? Mm -hmm. All in that one. It's gonna to got to hundreds in a minute. Very soon, like a uh, month, month dose for normal for normal people outside of the zone. Jesus. 150, 280. 
790. Mm -hmm. oh. 9,000? Mm -hmm. That's gone to 1.035. 1,000, so Whatever is in this bag, oh, 2,000, 3,000. It's dangerously radioactive. 2.7 millisievert. Millisievert, not micro, millisievert. Okay, cool. check. I check now. Let me go back, take it away. I know. You see? Oh, it's gone up to <laughs> 99. <laughs> what? Well, I think that should go back in to never be reopened again. <laughs> So guys, this is the one place that I would expect to see like tourists, but not for one second did I think there would be this many people here. Again, the HBO series has made this place so much more popular. How many people actually knew? I knew I know people knew about Chernobyl before like the HBO disaster, but how many people would have actually come here before the the series was on Sky, before HBO released their series? How many people would have actually thought of coming over to visit Chernobyl? And just the fact that people have watched that, it has become like a tourist destination now. It really has. But yeah guys, I know I've shown you this all before, but I want to show you again and I've got the bumper cars over here. And like I said before, if you haven't watched the first series, there will be a link in the description. But yeah, here we are. We are at the bumper cars now. So guys, we're leaving at Pripyat now. We've left Pripyat and we're driving back to our hotel. We're just driving through the Red Forest. Now, as you can see, put your hands off. Wow. As we drive past the Red Forest, it's gone up to 19. <laughs> 62? 68. That's, that's you remember, surprising. You remember that little dot to see more, we had to almost touch it. Yeah, yeah, now yeah. It comes many meters away. Imagine how, how, how many little dots there are. Yeah, oh, God, loads. Yeah. Guys, check this out. Oh, it's gone. Joking. Oh, there's another one. Look at this. Bloody pigs.